Hello everyone, Rob coming at you here with uh, kind of a game review tutorial I want to do for this game I picked up, Mark McMorris's Infinite Air. Been looking forward to getting this a little bit for some time now. Right off the bat, this is my spawn point in the one of the worlds I've been working on. Let's get in the helicopter and head over to where I've been building things on the other side of the mountain. You can see I've got kind of a berserk jump line pipe over there. Uh, that's when I that's one of the first things I started to build, but came over here and been working on a park for some time now and learning how to use the editor and I feel like I got some good tips I can offer people who are starting to get into the game and want to build their own world and show their creativity. I feel like I have a background where I might be able to give some good tips for those who are new to either snowboarding or park building as a whole. Um, and do a little kind of review of the game so let's start with kind of my background and what I'm doing here playing this game uh, I'm a recent college graduate uh, went to school and the whole entire time I've been went to classes I worked at a local ski resort actually on park crew build, helping build terrain parks and maintain them one of the things I will note about this game is uh, you will see a lot of people complaining that the controls are unusable yet. Yeah, I will say, yes, they are difficult. It took me some time to get used to playing this game. It, it is a challenge, big learning curve. As far as controls go, uh, if you were to relate it to gameplay, we're talking Kerbal Space Program challenging right off the bat, if you're familiar with that. Oh man. Starting off talking about just the kind of like the physics behind this game, I will say um, you can play it as realistically or unrealistically as you would like. And that's kind of the thing people are complaining about is how ridiculous you can go with it. But you know what? You can build a little tiny terrain park just like you would have at your local ski hill. And if you learn how to manage speed, you can really, really uh, take advantage of uh, what this game is. It, what I will say about this game is it kind of filling the gap in a part of my life right now. I'm kind of loving it for that aspect. Uh, Approaching ski season right now. It's October. Just went to the Motown Throwdown yesterday in Morgantown, West Virginia. Sick riding from some cool peeps. I won't be really working as a park crew anymore. You know, that was kind of like uh, the best job I think I might ever have. I really enjoyed that line of work. Just freaking awesome. Hanging out with friends, snowboarding, and I don't know. I got a fatuation with shoveling snow. This game kind of filling that gap in my life working full-time as an engineer so what I really want to get into here is what was that building building the actual parks particularly on jump design let me show you just for example that's a pretty normal like size terrain park as far as features that you will find on a regular basis I got this jump line that I put over here this is uh, pretty much one of the first major jump lines I've built in this game what I will say is this is kind of an example of I could take this as an example of how unrealistic you can play this game I'm dropping in here kind of what I uh, first want to point out is the way I designed all my jumps so far is that if you straight point at them without holding your uh, right and left buttons and you just point it you land right in the sweet spot with every jump and I'll kind of get into how I uh, did this a little bit later um, but let's let's get into the editor and show you kind of how I, I look at jump design and going into a, a grading tool here in the world editor that's pretty much the tool you use the most for uh, all your sculpting um, it's kind of tricky to get used to um, one of the things that's kind of hard to mitigate is these little bumps right here you'll see when you're making a jump jump design over the past several years has kind of been an evolution and especially when uh, triple corks came into play. A video Torstein Horgmo came out with uh, where he said people need to put more snow in their jumps. So they were building jumps uh, where just, for example, you would come out with a flat deck and you would just go straight down into your landing. And um, which is all fine and dandy, but what he was showing was people had, he had the ability at Keystone. 40 foot deck on a jump and can put into comparison the ones you see at X Games are like 70 foot from the takeoff to the knuckle here. Um, he had a 40 foot jump at Keystone that he was throwing triples on. And that was kind of the 
a, there was a big push after that. You started seeing the terrain parks with a lot of different jump design coming out. And of course, there's always been a lot of different jump design. Step up, step down. This is a pretty steep grade here, honestly, for building a jump. But we'll go, we'll go over to the other side and do it. One thing I notice is you can change the side, the size of how much snow you're working with a munch. But the downsides to working with very large amounts is that you have once you place your uh, first bit. You only have a, a limited amount of how f you can go forward as far as you want, but you can only go so far back, and that kind of limits what you can do. Working with smaller sizes can definitely be a lot easier. And what I'm going to build right now is something very similar to this, and I'll show you how I kind of lay it out. Um, as you can see, instead of building the deck straight up and out to the knuckle, I really arch it up and that allows me to put a lot more angle on the ramp. It's kind of harder to see when you are spinning a trick in midair because uh, you kind of look up at the sky for a while before you come back into your landing and as far as the gameplay goes. But uh, as far as being able to speed manage and get the most air out of a smaller jump, this is the way to go for the most part. I'm going to start at the bottom here with this jump and let's see how smooth I can make this go build our uh, landing first you know what I probably want to go downhill a little bit more than this just to start place point there go up and I'm actually working with a pretty wide amount can even lower that down some go about to uh, there maybe make it a little bit steeper place a point alright so here's the thing I'm gonna look at it from the side kinda get it just below or at flat like you there, maybe move over, make it a bigger deck, and then place a point, and we'll drop down steep and sharp like that. Make that kind of uh, motion with it. And I'm not really doing a good job of lining up with my previous jump here, but we'll see how I uh, manage to get this. Now, one of the tricks that I've learned in doing this is instead of trying to tie this tier in down here, if I go all the way up to the knuckle of my previous jump, this makes it pretty easy. Uh, as far as the transition down there, it'll smooth it out. Heck, I can even add a point in here. Um, lower down some. Maybe make this a little bit smaller so I can get in closer. Like I said, that's kind of a limiting feature in this game. Uh, I'm trying to keep it straight, too. So, place a point. And we will go up to the knuckle of the previous jump. And we'll use the left button to tune it in and grade it so there's no real hump in the transition. That's, that's a pretty gnarly transition there. So I think I want to even smooth that out some. So we can go into the world editor, use the selection tool, click on the feature we just made and we get this pretty cool node system um, for every point that we add we can change so I can actually change the position of the last point I placed, the height of it um, go saying that's looking pretty good right there, hit this point here lower it down a hair nice so knuckles kinda rounded off I don't like that in jump design personally I like nice not com way way sharp knuckles I know one of this one right here in particular got pretty sharp once I get that kinda looking where I want it I'll go back into the world editor I'll place object go to ramps one of the medium sized jumps I think I'm gonna go with the that's a wide medium kicker I think I just want a medium um, standard medium kicker now you have this option here to lock it onto the terrain uh, I'm not going to use that in this case. Uh, I've tried doing jump designs where I actually place this first and raise it up. And I'll actually get my booter first and transition into the ground. Um, but as you can see, that's kind of making just a normal style feature. And you kind of have to work with the snow a lot to get it to the kind of tabletop design that I'm working on in here. We'll just go into this mode and we'll get it over here. What we want to do is use the rotate. We want to place the very end of the jump with the nut, with the uh, rollover area right there. And we'll get it centered up. And after that, lower it down so we make contact with the snow. And then rotate and just kind of play around with this until you don't want the <laughs> transition angle like that. Try to keep it as smooth as possible. Makes the gameplay nicer. And make contact 
looking good. Give a little rotation, maybe. Um, I'm kind of liking that. Doing a quick build here, obviously, so I'm not going to make it absolutely perfect, but I think that's a good start. And you can see, you can see right here, right off the bat, that little uh, flat top to the takeoff there. It's pointing pretty, sh pretty good angle. Um, so obviously, this is not <laughs> intuitive as far as jump design goes. Um, without getting into any of the crazier details, I mean, the place I worked, we weren't an SBT park or anything. We just kind of eyeballed it up and looked at, stayed in touch with the industry to see what people were doing. So I'm going to place that, and we're going to go back to the choppa, and we're going to do a trial run here, see what we can do. We'll actually charge at it, see where I'm at here. Like I said, I've kind of generally done jump design, so I'm landing in the sweet spot with every go. All right, let's see what the new guy does. And here we go, do a nice back 180 because it'll help land up with transition. And you know what, for a start, that's not too bad. We can just stop here and uh, hit the menu button, go into the world editor, and with this game, we go even into the selection tool. We can see the path we just took. took and see our, uh, the trajectory with it. So what we'll do here is we can tweak the jump here and get that arc so it's right we're landing right past where the knuckle is so that's looking pretty good let's uh let's go back and go for another little test run here so one thing that i have noticed in this game is uh especially with this kind of jump design where i'm adding a lot more lip to the takeoffs is you tend to go pretty back seat um what i've learned to do is kind of either do a spin or a quick 180 left stick if i'm just straight pointing it just give a left stick input spin around 180 and kind of been using that as uh, the baseline as far as speeding selecting the speed for a jump one thing i will note here is in this transitional area i tend to try to keep that level with the surrounding ground that's normally how it is done in a normal park and this is a very quick transition a lot of uh spacing between most parks you'll just have flat area before the next jump takeoff but you'll see in a lot of professional parks it's more of this kind of style um, this is just a little bit sharper than what you would normally see so let's give this jump line a little test run as i said i try to line things up so i generally am uh, landing right at the sweet spot right after the knuckle with every jump I'm definitely not going to land this. Oh my gosh. But you can still see I'm getting kind of where I want to be with each of these jumps. That's kind of my input on jumps for you. You can play around with that technique, as I said. Um, getting more air and less forward distance. And what I really said with this game is speed control is absolutely key to how you want to play it. And you know, once you really discipline yourself and the getting into that mindset of how to approach things, um, the, the gaming experience becomes really realistic and a lot of fun. One thing I will note about this game, pole jams, really hard. Really hard to hit. You gotta hit them dead straight on unless you're doing a spin. Oh man, Gucci Plateau. People will know what I am talking about. So, as far as park flow, I kind of like this section. It kind of really breaks up the straight line feel of the park kills off the speed you get in the jump line it's a good technique to go with for those of you that are interested i will note parallel bars oh, fan favorite they work and they don't um you do lock on the one rail in particular but they work oh man totally landed that straight did you see that guys sweet trick oh. No, actually, this is not a bad line. Oh, whoa, have you see that? Whoa, dude, no way. Oh, oh, sending it deep, deep. And that is Gucci Plateau in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, features at the end of the jump lines that'll kill your speed off in this game when you're designing, pretty fun. Um, as far as this park line goes, as far as selecting an area to place it, um, I kind of look for gullies in the mountains. You got 
kind of the major outcrops and then you have these flat sections going through it if I were to find another one let's see here what what, I, what can I find um, I've kind of really already dealt with a lot of this area if we were to go over here oh right here see this line right here I haven't messed with this at all this is what you want to look for um, this is where ski resorts will build most of their items uh, first thing I do is this snow here will be pretty deep uh, so first things first, you want to get the grading tool in the world editor and the sculpts now. So there's smooth and grade. Um, smooth, haven't really fully figured out. All I know is that when you're using it, you can change the uh, depth of the snow from zero, like it's straight groomed, to the most powder that the generator will let you do. But generally when I'm starting to build an area, I'll start off and try to keep the depth just make a nice smooth path the whole way down uh, add points and as you can see it changes the depth of every point so you might be going and changing it up There's this clear objects feature you can use it create a straight point boom tree's gone or and uh, I can undo it uh, that's my first approach to when I'm building an area up uh, second thing is especially with rail lines tiering so drop in flat tier down flat tier this is kind of the most basic general park build style you'll you will see you'll take flat land and tear it out and you can put down features on one tier flat features on another um, I kind of made it this this is actually a pretty fun feature over here put a little takeoff and some rocks there and you can actually bonk those in this game um, one of the things that honestly makes this game pretty freaking fun so let's drop into the backcountry show you kind of some of the things that you can do with building snow features in the backcountry. So going back to the world editor, if you're a fan of Travis Rice, you will know that several years ago we had the supernatural and then the ultra natural features of Baldface. And those were kind of iconic on the scary cherry run. Um, and this game gives you the tools you need to make something quite similar. They're under the ramps. Uh, you've probably seen them in the gameplay if you're playing, and you've got these, pretty much these three uh, features here. Um, especially if we were to go down the trees and we wanted to make something to look kind of like it, if we were in a run. Uh, obviously, if we're doing something like Scary Cherry, we're going to be in the steeps. I don't know, we could uh, just put some features sticking out of the snow with this. Like I said, carving and killing speed is key in this game. Make it feel realistic. Oh yeah. Right at a tree. So that's a fun thing to do. Um, going back to the park here. Let's look at some of the tools for placing rail features. As I showed you, when you're placing a jump, you have those two options to sculpt the snow underneath it and build it up. Um, the rails kind of have something similar. Uh, but not quite like it. It doesn't bring the snow up with them. So if we go to the place object and we go to rails and jibs, let's just look at some basic flat rail. Uh, you can... Let's go to an area that's pretty open here. Sure. Um, the Y button allows you to align it with the grade you're currently on. Now one thing when you're building a run to make it look kind of sweet is place some trees in between the features you're building. Um, kind of opposite of what you do in real life, obviously you don't sculpt all your features and, and put your trees in afterwards, but like I said, when I was trying to build this run right here, I was trying to make it look like you were in the woods while you were riding. And those are those are some of my favorite parks to ride. It's just the uh, ambiance of being in the woods and hitting some features. Really cool. Another thing snowboarders will know is the five areas of a jump for landing. Let's look at a jump deck. And when I say by the deck, what I'm referring to as a deck is the area from the takeoff to the knuckle. So this is the knuckle. So you can, if you come up short on a jump, and it's called knuckling a jump, not fun. Legs get compressed, knees up to your chest, and usually a bad time. So right after the knuckle we have the sweet spot zone. That's where you want to land every time, for the most part. After the sweet spot, you got the thug zone, sending it deep. And that's where you see most triples being thrown to. 
after the thug zone you got the Gucci Plateau which is the transition area anything beyond that say on this jump if you were to land down here and out that's Big Air Dave that's Big Air Dave I'd like to add cabins into my terrain makes it cool feel homey some rock features I placed in here in the areas just to fill it in one of the things that is a real limitation of uh, these uh, the grading feature in this game is everything's squared off at the end um, so trying to do transitions can be a little tough if I were to say one thing to the editors it would be nice instead of having a squared off editing tool it'd be nice to have something that would raise a round area that comes up to a point that way you can f help fill in some of these gaps um, I know that's kind of hard probably harder to pull off in far game design so that's probably why they stayed away from that sort of thing while I'm playing this game I feel like I have a duty as a snowboarder to point out to everyone else that are on the slopes some of the park etiquette we have out here um, one of the things I would like to point out right off the bat is gaping so gaping is when you have a takeoff like this one going into a feature when you look at that takeoff instead of hitting the feature right ahead yo 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 sweet dude cool jump I'm gonna go up that what that ends up doing in reality is rounding off that edge and you will be the bane of every park crew members existence we don't like you if you're having fun we like that but that is some slack as far as basic jump and park design that's kind of all I wanted to really cover in this video um, I don't know if I could look in here and mention anything else at the moment underworld editor Create Run, uh, if you haven't figured that out yet playing this game. So you got these categories, Slope Style, Big Air, Half Pipe. For something like this, you would do Slope Style. So right at the beginning of your run, you would place an arch. And that marks the beginning of your run. And every feature set that you want to be scored in your run, you mark. And at the end, you can hit Finish. Name the run. I'm going to hit Cancel right now. But you name the run, and then when you enter the multiplayer game space and you publish your mountain, that's what people will ride. Thanks for joining me on my uh, first video here for Mark McMorris's Infinite Air. Um, hope that gave you some insight to some of the gameplay. And thanks for joining me, and I hope that you will join me in another video to come.